My name is Kainton, the Tech Pro, and today I'm going to show you how to set up and use PostgreSQL. I'm going to show you how to create a database, even how to import data from a CSV file or Excel to PostgreSQL. And interestingly, PostgreSQL is very, very easy, one of the simplest databases to use and very easy to set up. Another thing about it is it is lightweight. You need to, you can easily install it and have a GUI to manage your database. So I have this database I call TestDB. I created in PostgreSQL, so it's connected, so I can easily go to catalogs and I go to, sorry, I go to schemas. So I have this table here called telescope data. I can easily uh, uh, just view and edit data and say first 100 rows and I can easily see the data sets uh, in this database. So we wait for a couple of seconds, you can see the data right here, okay? So you see I have data in my database. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to close up these and let's start from the scratch. I'm going to first go to my add remove programs and uninstall it. The reason is because I want to show you how to set up this PostgreSQL right from the scratch. So we are going to download it, set it up and actually uh, do all the necessary configuration. It's actually going to take very, uh, very short time. So I'm going to kind of search for it right here and just uninstall. So this is it. So I'm going to just click and just say uninstall and just say uninstall. So while it is uninstalling, I would like us to go to Google uh, and then download a copy of PostgreSQL and then we, 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 we set it up using the installer. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to so just say PostgreSQL download. So download it by clicking on the down. Okay, just go directly to Windows Installers. Meanwhile, let's check the uninstall process. Okay, I'll click on install. Yes, uninstall. So let's click on that. Let's look for the download and then we can download. So we have a platform da 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 da. Advanced users can download the zip archive without the installer. No, let's download the installer. So just go to uh, Windows Installers download the installer at this point so the file is about I don't know the size but uh, uh, I think we can download for Windows my my operating system is uh, 64 bit so I'm going to just take this one so it starts the download uh, da, da, da. you need permission da, 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 da. so so you see downloading stage that eight seconds so let's wait a couple of seconds for it to download so at this point, the download completed successfully. So if I go to my download folder, you can see PostgreSQL sitting here. PostgreSQL 12.0.1 for Windows 64 bit, and that is the installer. If I also go to Add Remove Program, I'll find out that there is no PostgreSQL anymore in my system. So you can actually follow. I also like to go to Program Files to just check if I have it there. So Program Files. And you can, you can see PostgreSQL as a directory. So I'm actually going to delete it as well. So I'm going to just click on delete and then delete it completely from my system. Yes, continue. All right, so we have all the PostgreSQL deleted. I'm going to just empty my recycle bin just to make sure everything is gone. Yes. All right, so let's go to install PostgreSQL. Uh, continue, yes. I'm going to go to my download folder and just run the installer by double clicking on it. This is it. Maybe I can just make the view to be a little large icon, medium size icon. So this is it PostgreSQL. I'm going to just double click. So to install it, simply double click or you can right click and just click on uh, open or run. Let's see. So the installer opens up, it says set up for set up PostgreSQL. Welcome to PostgreSQL setup wizard. I'm gonna click on next. I'm going to install it in C program files PostgreSQL 12. That is fine. We have the server, the admin, the start builder, and the command line tools. Leave all these things checked. So make sure they are checked and say next. Alright, so everything is good. Uh, so we need to actually set up a password. Don't forget this type, just set up a password. I'm going to just use a four-letter password because this is a demo. I'm going to go next. 
So take note of this post if you want to change it, but I'll recommend you list you leave it the way it is five four three two and that is default post for PostgreSQL. I'm going to say next. Uh, locale is okay. Uh, default is fine. All right. So this is the details of the installation. You can actually copy this. I can actually copy this and save it somewhere. Meanwhile, I'm going to click on next. Uh, yes, click on next and the installation starts. So let me just open Notepad and paste those details because I might need it. So just open Notepad, paste all the details, and then save it somewhere. So you have, for, for instance, you need uh, the ports, the super user, the database super user is Postgres, and basically that is all. All right, so just, let me just save it somewhere in my system. I'll save it on the desktop. So let's allow it to complete the installation and then we continue the setup. At this point, the installation completes. So it's going to ask you, um, Stack Builder may be used to download and install additional tools. Um, do we want to launch it? Uh, Okay, I'm just going to cancel this. So just cancel it. Yes, exit. So if I go to my program files, I'll locate PostgreSQL uh, in under programs. Just go down. You can see PostgreSQL 12. So just drop down. You can see a number of things. So the one you go, you are going to add to your desktop. We have PG admin. So just right click and uh, you can actually pin it to start or you can. So at this point, I have it in the start menu. So I'm going to open PostgreSQL by PG admin. So if I open it, it will give me a GUI, a GUI, a GUI called PG admin. Now we are in the dashboard at this point. So uh, here you have uh, some explanation or some uh, information given about PG admin. It's a management tool free for PostgreSQL. And it's an open source administration and management tool for PostgreSQL database. It includes a graphical user uh, interface, administration, administration interface, SQL query tool, a procedural code debugger, and much more. The tool is designed to answer the needs of developers, DBAs, and system administrators alike. Now, there are a number of things you can do. Create a new server, configure PG admin. Now, we are not going to do all these ones for now. We are going to simply create a new database and also import data from a CSV file. After creating a database, we create a table and then we load that table with a data from a CSV file. So I'm actually going to expand the servers. When you expand the servers, you also expand the PostgreSQL, the, 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 the database server, and you come to databases. Once you come to databases, you have only one database which was created by default. Also, we have this place you have logins and group our roles. So in this case, we have Postgres, that is the super user. You can actually create a new user or a new login. When you click on new, you can have uh, give it a name and come to privileges and make it a super user if you want. For now, let's not do that. We can simply uh, use the existing user. So on that databases, I'm going to simply right click and say create and say database. So this database, I'm going to call it demo DB. So it's a new database I'm creating. You can look at some properties under definition, security, you have parameters, SQL. For now, don't worry about all this. After entering the name of the database, simply click on save. So when you click on save, it takes a few seconds and it provides the database for, for us. Now, when you have this dashboard, it is giving you the information about the currently selected item. So this server session, transactions per second, top of thing, it's about uh, the information about databases generally. So if you also click on demo DB, it's actually going to change and give you the information about that particular database object. All right, now let's now go to create a table. So in PostgreSQL, when you create a database, you can actually create objects inside the database called schemas. 
So schemas is a way, a schema is a way to separate the database into different sections. So for instance, you have different users that you want to maintain separate data for different users. You can actually create a schema or different schema for different users. So it's more like you're creating different databases on that one database. So, and this is beautiful for PostgreSQL because it's a way you can uh, achieve loose coupling when you're working with services. So on the schemas, we have one default schema called public, okay? So I'm going to drop down public. Let's not create any schema. Let's just work with the public schema. On the public, we have a, uh, on the tables, there is no table. So let's create a table now by clicking on create table. And I'm going to call this table users. I'm going to call it users in lowercase. The table space, don't worry about the partitions, not necessary. So the next thing you might want to do is to define the columns. Meanwhile, when you click on save, that is fine. You can create the, the columns later. But right now, let's create some columns. So I'm going to click on this plus sign and it gives me option to create a column. So I'm going to say ID. The data type is going to be integer. And I'm going to make it a primary key, all right? I'm going to click on the plus sign again. I'm going to now click on name or first name. This time I'm going to make it to be test. T-E-X-T. -E so I can actually search it out by typing T-E-X-T. -E and then I'm going to create another one. This time it's going to be last name. And I'm going to also make it to be text. Now, the good thing about this is I can add some data manually. I can also import some data from an Excel sheet or a CSV file. So now let's just add one or two uh, items there. So I'm going to go to, I, I'm going to right click on the user table. I'm going, I'm going to click on view and edit data and simply click on all rows. So let's add in a few data. So it comes to provide this, uh, this, uh, data sheet here. So the only th what you says you simply do is to click on this edit editable column. Okay, you actually click on the on the row itself. So ID of one first name, Tyson. So for this for, for the other ones you actually have to double click. All right. So. All right, so I've added a few names and this is simply how to create a table. So uh, we've created this table and it automatically saves itself. So what I'm going to do now, let's create, let's go to import a CSV file. All right, so now we are going to be importing a table from a CSV file in our system, my system. So I have a CSV file called uh, auto2.csv. So I'm gonna open it, but one thing about uh, PostgreSQL is that if you are going to import a table, you need to have that table already created in PostgreSQL. So that is one drawback. You actually need to have exactly a table with the same uh, schema. So let me just create this table at once at this point. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to come to table and just click on create table. So um yeah so i'm going to also call it auto auto and everything can be the same i'm going to call the column i'm going to click on add all right so we've created the table in postgresql but it seems to me that the mpg has to be double just like the acceleration is also double so i'm going to just go to mpg and select double so double is more like uh decimal data type or floating point data type but a beta with the beta uh, precision so i'm going to select double so let me just click on save at this point so we have our table created called auto uh, but there is nothing inside. So if I right click and just select uh, view all rows, you see that there is nothing inside. So at this point, we are going to import import this auto tool uh, data from this place into uh, PostgreSQL. 
So what to do is to click on the on the table we want to import data into, which is this one, and I'm going to go to Tools and say Import Export. When you click on Import Export, just flip this button to Import. So it's now asking what file name. So I'm going to click this ellipsis and I'm going to go to my drive, the my drive D. My drive D contains a folder called dataset and auto2.csv and I'm going to select it. Right, so um, so encoding, let's select UTF. So that's the, the one I normally use. And what else is asking delimiter? There's a CSV, then it's going to be a comma. So let's say OK. So at this time you can see successfully completed and the data likely is imported. You can look at the details, everything, copy 397 rows. That is great. So if I right click on auto now and view data, all rows, you can see that the data has been successfully imported. Let's see. So you can see the data sitting right here and that is very, very good. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, we are going to be talking about other things in subsequent tutorials, how to create views, how to create thought procedures, how to create functions, how to create relationships and stuff like that. So please subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed and hit that subscribe button and also feel free to share this video around and uh, and uh, let me know how you, how you feel about my, my lessons.